Good morning. Today we look at uh, chapter 3 of Luke's Gospel. And it begins with the story of John the Baptist, the, the proclamation, the baptism, the a little bit of a conversation that he has with the people there. But it, uh, as you know, Luke had started out to write an orderly account, and so here in the beginning of chapter 3, we have this some of this orderly account because Luke tells us it's in the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod was the ruler of Galilee, his brother Philip the ruler of the region of this, and during the reign of the priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. And so Luke wanted to specify what year this was. I mean, he wanted us to know what time in history this occurred, and it's a part of Luke's orderly account for us to be able to... Um, know these names and to put them in place. And then also within this, I mean, we have the Annas and Caiaphas as the high priests, the priesthood of them. And, and we hear Caiaphas' name and Annas' name both when uh, three years later when the, when the trial and, and crucifixion come. And you know, we're going to hear those things um, the next couple of weeks, next couple of Sundays, uh, especially you know, as we are... Uh, this Sunday being Palm Sunday, and then with uh, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and, and Easter Sunday coming, we will hear of those, some of those very people that, that Luke uh, mentions here for us. Um, tomorrow morning, by the way, I'm going to be on early. It'll be available all day long, but uh, tomorrow morning will be on kind of early. We're going to make a journey and get our grandkids. We're going to have them for a week, so... Um, we're going to be prepared for that. So, Anthony, go back to Luke. Uh, so, uh, John the Baptist comes, and it says that in the 15th year, you know, the voice of God, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah. And we just talked, we, we learned of Zechariah and Elizabeth, especially in, in Luke's gospel. And that, you know, it says that he, John, went about all the region, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and then they quote from Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. You know, the, so that John is the fulfillment of this prophecy um, that's going to lead to, to, the, to the Messiah coming. And in, in Luke's gospel, you know, verse 7, it says, John says to the crowds that came to him, you brood of vipers, what brings you here? We read in another gospel that he says that to the Pharisees, to the religious leaders as they come asking John, um, what are you doing? And, and also to be baptized by him for this repentance. Um, but, you know, he, <laughs> I mean, you know, John the Baptist, he's a, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And if you came to him and he looked at you and he says, well, you brood of viper, or you viper, what do you think you're doing here? I mean, what kind of warm welcome is that? <laughs> Not very warm welcome. But, it's a reminder for us that that's who we are, that we are sinners in need of a, of a loving and a gracious and forgiving God. And, you know, he asks them, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He says, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And he says, don't count your laurels on that you're descendant of Abraham or descendant of whoever, you know, because that doesn't do you any good at all. And he, you know, he talks about, you know, the axe lying at the root of every tree. And if the tree doesn't bear fruit, fruit it's going to be cut down. And, and uh, he's reminding us all. I mean, those people then and us now as well that all our lives are to reflect Jesus. And, um, you know, if the tree gets cut down and thrown into the fire, I mean, that's, that's the eternal condemnation that, that we that we, we read about and we talk about and for those who don't believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. So John has greeted them with this, you brood of vipers, and the crowd says, well, what should we do? What can we do in order to, to bear good fruits? How do, we, how do we have to change? And he says, you know, whoever has two coats, you know, share. You know, whoever has food, share. Tax collectors, be happy with what you got. Don't gouge somebody. Soldiers, you know, don't take advantage of your position to extort money from people or, you know, just, you know, basically, I mean, John says, live by the good rule, you know, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. He doesn't use that word, but, but this is what John is saying is to, you know, be a decent human being 
and not only a decent human being, but a caring and loving and concerned human being. And, uh, you know, verse 15 says, as the people were filled with expectation, they were all questioning in their hearts, wondering if John was the Messiah, because they've been waiting and watching for the Messiah. And John answers them saying, no, I baptize you with water, but one who is coming after me will baptize with the Holy Spirit. John knows he is not the Messiah. And I've mentioned this before, but a statue of John will always have a finger pointing because John is pointing to Jesus. And, and I've seen uh, one statue of John in person, um, and, and it is. I mean, he has a, a finger extended pointing to Jesus that way. And he says, he, John says this about Jesus, that I am not worthy to untie his sandals. And we think about John saying that. If John's not worthy to untie Jesus' sandals, how worthy am I to be in God's presence? You know, John says, I'm not worthy to be in his presence as a servant. And that's, I mean, that's the same for you and for me. How worthy, how worthy are we of God's love and of God's grace? How worthy are we to be able to come to God in prayer and to speak to God and, and hope, know, believe, trust that he hears us? You know, how worthy are we? You know, but, you know, John says, I'm not worthy. And, and we need to remember that of ourselves. And the only way we are worthy is through Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, come to me all who are burdened and heavy laden, you know. And so John is proclaiming this baptism. He's proclaiming the, the coming of the Savior. And he's, you know, he's talking to all people. And, and it says, so with many other exhortations, or statements, he proclaimed the good news to the people. And then we come to the problem. But, 19, verse 19, Herod the ruler, who had been rebuked by him, John, because of his wife Herodias, and because of all of the evil things that Herod had done, he did one more evil thing by shutting John up in prison. He said, it says, he added to them all by shutting John up in prison. He has, Herod added to, to all of his evil doings by putting John in prison. And, and that's all we're going to hear about John for right now anyway. In verse 21, we switch, switch directions a little bit. Now, when all the people were baptized, and here and Luke has that word all. When, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus had been baptized and was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son the beloved in whom I am well pleased. So we don't have, in Luke's gospel, uh, a big deal about Jesus' baptism, just this little paragraph that includes Jesus in all of those that were baptized. But the difference in Jesus is, is that the Holy Spirit descends bodily in the form of a dove. And we have this voice from heaven. And, and so we have that affirmation of Jesus, the Son of God, uh, coming into the world. And then right after we hear this voice from heaven saying, you are my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased, Luke gives us the genealogy of Jesus all the way back to God. So from verses 23 to 38, I mean, this is, this is Luke's task. I mean, for the Jewish community, Matthew uh, traced it back to David because lineage, heritage is, is a big thing for them. But uh, Luke says when Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his work, and that's, okay, the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And then he says, he was the son, parentheses, as was thought of Joseph. You know, I mean, so here we just heard the voice of God. You are my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. And then Luke tells us he was the son of, thought to be the son of Joseph. And then he traces, traces Jesus all the way back to God. And, you know, if you read through these names, and, and often I'm tempted just to kind of skim through them. But as I look through those list of names, there are a lot of those names in Jesus' lineage that I recognize and remember from the, from the Bible stories I heard in Sunday school as a, growing up and from what I hear, you know, David, Jesse, Obed, Boaz, Abraham, Isaac, uh, and it goes back to Shem and Noah and Enos and Seth and Adam. You know, I mean, Jesus' lineage is impressive and... Um, and Luke traces it all the way back that way to God, showing us that Jesus 
was the first son of God. With that, I leave you today. See you early tomorrow morning sometime. Uh, God's blessings.